This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Script to Screen has had a blast here at the 2015 Comic-Con convention. Unfortunately, there has been a zombie outbreak. So, our show's been hijacked by the undead. We thought if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. So welcome to Script to Screen, The Walking Dead. This question is, uh, when you first heard the script, I'm sure you had a certain perception of Herschel. What was the biggest change for you by the time his character finished in his last script? Oh, it was enormous. I, I, you know, one thing about, which I wasn't aware of until I did this show, is how things evolve over the course of, of, uh, of three seasons. And if, if before, if you do a play, you recognize the full arc of the character in one night. If you do a film, you recognize the full arc of the character. You may not shoot it in one night, but you know what it is from reading the script. In this, the character evolved o or organically over a period of like three seasons for me. So I, you may do things where you try to plant an idea, plant a direction, and then you hope it pays off. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a continually evolving process. So it was very exciting for me. I mean, he started as the good guy trying to hold his humanity by keeping the zombie family alive, went to a dark place, but at the end returned back to, I thought, the human side, trying to rebuild his life in a community. How was that for you, especially toward the end, bringing Rick back, trying to bring Rick back from his darkness? Well, I think, you know, I think one thing that was consistent about Herschel throughout, from the first episode on, was that he did care about his fellow man. I mean, he may have had a misconception about the walkers. He may have thought that you, they could be redeemed, but that even shows how much he did care about his fellow human, man, human, human beings. And when he realized that his wife and other walkers, there was no cure for it for them, which was pointed out to him in episode eight of, of the second season, well, he, he went on a bender. He, I mean, he, you know, but, but he came out of that with a, still a sense of purpose and a sense of doing what was best for his fellow, fellow fellows. This is one little abstract question. Could he have survived emotionally Beth's death if Herschel didn't die? Could he have actually survived emotionally Beth dying? I think it would have been devastating to him, no doubt about it. It would have been devastating. I mean, but if he were, were believed what he had been saying, then he would have had to get come around and would have had to appreciate the values that she represented while she was alive, I think. I mean, that's, I don't know how, since it didn't happen, I don't know how it would play <laughs> but out. But he would have loved Alexandria, bringing a building community probably where they are now, yeah, just the idea of like yeah. home and family. Yeah, yeah but he, Herschel had an interesting past too. You know, he said, oh, I know how to shoot, I just don't want, don't like to. <laughs> I mean, so he had, he had a, an interesting, uh, an interesting life, you know. Well, thank you so much. This is so great. It really means a lot to us and our students are so appreciative. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, so when you first read your character script and your character, how did your perception change from the first script to your last? Um, you know, I think it was just a nice evolution of Noah getting stronger. So I think that was... That was just kind of it. Um, but you know what the show does well is they keep a really good through line. So it wasn't like that much of a change. I think just, you know, his circumstances changed and the naivete of um, him kind of being in that hospital and then realizing what the real world is kind of is what, what it was. And how are you feeling? I mean, you and Beth grew close and I thought a very special way. How did you uh, work with her to develop your relationship? Oh, it was really cool. You know, it was, um, Emily was the first person I worked with. 
Um, so it was nice uh, to kind of build that relationship of, you know, two people who don't really know each other but need each other type of thing. Uh, so that's what was really cool. It was like this, it had to be this forced quick bond, which was nice because they threw me in, you know, in the middle of the season. So it was like, it's very natural. Um, so it was cool, yeah. And uh, if, the, if the evil writers did not kill you off, where do you think they would have went together relationship-wise if you kept going? Um, you know, I think, no, it just would have kind of become Glenn's right hand. You know, I think he, at the end of the day, he just needed somebody, you know, to kind of follow under. And I think that's what it would have been, you know. Eventually, I think it would have gone down somewhat the same way it happened. You know, just the two of them out there and him eventually sacrificing himself. Uh, you probably, I would say, had the most gruesome death <laughs> on, uh, you know, most violent, most, I, I don't know really how to describe it. Fans, of course, know what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, how difficult was that shoot? Oh, it was rough. You know, we did that scene for an entire day. Um, it was uh, it was a really emotional you know ride, um, but we you know we wanted to kind of keep it intact and we wanted to make sure that you know people felt like they were in that revolving door with us and yeah I think we were able to accomplish that. Yeah, because it's interesting. You were very claustrophobic. I mean, the scene must have been really kind of as an actor, yeah. like wow, I got to play this and yeah, no, it was really really tight. Um, and I think you know the way it was shot uh, by Jen was fantastic. You know where you felt like you were in that revolving door with them. Um, and it was tight and it was scary and it was, you know, a really messed up situation. I'm hoping the zombie actors were kind to you. Oh, they didn't they accidentally were, bite you. They were great. These guys are they're, they're some of the most professional people in the world. They're like, it's so great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my, a big question for you is what, when you first read the script compared to the end, your last episode, how did you feel your perception change of your character? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know that my perception changed. I think, you know, it was one of those uh, happy marriages. The way I saw the characters, pretty much what they were writing. So um, I didn't, um, I was never really, I was always at peace with their perception of, of, of how Tyree should be portrayed and, and what I was actually putting out as well, so. I always found it fascinating where he was so focused on trying to keep his humanity. That's trying right. to stay, did not want to go savage, almost would rather die than go savage. Yeah, kind of pretty much, I, that, that, that's a good way of putting it, but you know, more than anything else, you know, uh, hope is where, you know, humanity, humanity lives in hope to me. So that's, he's, his wish was for things to return to normal. So that's the greatest hope you can have. So what do you need to accomplish that really? Humanity. And I like the fact that he became the surrogate father to Rick's baby. Yeah. That was a really, I, that was actually my, my, my favorite touch to your character. Oh, yeah, I love that, too. I love uh, being daddy daycare. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. But, uh, no, no, that was a great responsibility, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm sure that strengthened the bond between me and Rick, even though we didn't ideologically see things the same. Uh, and finally, uh, yeah, most of the characters, when they die, die horribly, shockingly, but you actually had a whole episode to explore the deaths. I did. How was that for you as an actor playing that episode? It must have been difficult too. Oh, incredibly intense, but that's what we want, you know. Actors, we run into the, you know, burning building of emotions where everybody else is trying to run away from it. We run to it. So I, I loved the challenge and um, I thought it was like, wow, okay, this is an opportunity to top what we did in the Grove episode. Yeah. So, and I think we did. Uh, it was beautiful. Where do you think he would, if they didn't, if you, the evil riders did not kill you off, mm -hmm. like they did, where do you think he would be now? I, I think, see, that's why he had to go. Yeah. Why, you, you saw him take a stance. You know who this man is. Yeah. And so either they're gonna allow him to go off on his own and find other like-minded people, or it's time to go. Yeah. You know, because it's all in relation to Rick. Yeah. All right, Thank so you. uh, your character, not so nice at the beginning. Uh, what was for you the biggest change in your character from the first episode to your last? Well, uh, basically the, the, the role was written very, uh, very two-dimensional. So uh, my, my job is to uh, make, the, make the character more human, more realistic. So and I think that's what I did. And that, that happened. Uh, um, uh, after every episode, you you got you found more and more about this character. I mean, his love for Daryl was yeah. kind of the most redeeming part. And I, well, his brother, yeah. yeah, I mean, of he, course, their relationship was really the heart of your show. How hard was it to shoot that last episode, though? Because you had a pretty horrible death scene, but an episode devoted to you. 
Yeah, but the uh, death scene was uh, was more of a death sequence. Sequence. You know, uh, you saw it building up from even when I was in the uh, in the prison. You know, when I uh, when I'm asking for whiskey, you think I'm asking for whiskey just to drink. I'm going to drink it, course, but I'm also going to drink. There was a purpose behind it, you know. So, uh, if if the evil writers didn't kill you off, uh, where do you think he would be now? Who knows? I mean, who knows? It's a long show, and uh, the writers are thinking three, four, five, six episodes down the road. So, but I like the fact that he got accepted by the group. He started coming into the group. Really, I don't really think they accepted me. I don't think they accepted uh, Merle at all. I don't think Merle really accepted them as well. But they needed him. You yeah. would, yeah, I think they did, yeah. Uh, we have a quick question about Guardians. We did a recent event with the editor, Guardians of the Galaxy, awesome movie. How was it for you burying yourself into a new costume, new color of your skin? Was it kind of fun to bury yourself into an alien character? Well, the, the makeup and costume took about four hours to, to get on. And so in that whole process, you sort of sort of get ready, get ready to do the, do the role, so. And uh, so we, we were, one of the questions we were gonna ask is, are the fans afraid of you because of your character, Merle? But we've noticed the fans are really embracing you today here. Uh, I don't think the fans are afraid of uh, uh, me, Michael Rooker. They're, they're a little intimidated at times <laughs> because of the roles I play, but uh, usually yeah, they're, they're very pleasantly surprised. You don't play it up and try to scare them once in a while? That it's, that it's uh, actually, it's all acting. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Loved you on the show. Wish you were back. Uh, my pleasure. You know, and look well, forward. You know we're we're uh, doing um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Of course. So uh, I'm involved with that. And, and of course, you can't say anything about it. Oh, that I'm in it. But <laughs> Marvel would kill you. And, uh, okay. But you know, you don't want to know anything about it. I mean, just like uh, when I was doing The Walking Dead. You don't. You want to know, but you don't really know, want to know. I was, I was curious. How far in advance did you know that they were going to kill you off? Oh, uh, about two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. And was it difficult on set that day? That final shoot. That final shoot. Every day is difficult on that on that set. Yeah, I, I mean you're dealing with uh, the the weather, the hot, the heat okay. in Atlanta. You're dealing with the snakes, the bugs. It's <laughs> it's really uh, a tough. It's a tough shoot. But it must make you a really good bonding situation with the other cast members, a special feel. Oh, we all, we all are, are good buddies, yeah.